you don't fix this no no amount of development is going to help uh, humanity because most of these are getting degraded very fast so our attempt is to fix this and work with indigenous communities in the process thank you thanks dilip bhai uh, <clears throat> so i think uh, this uh, the word multiversities is quite a quite a quite a word in itself and it's very uh, it sounds very fancy to me at least uh, uh, i think uh, to start with i think we can uh, we can tell you a bit about the multiversities uh, and i invite uh, dilip bhai to start and abhijit and i will join uh, him with that so multiversity for me is like a diverse forest with all kind of animals right from lion tiger to ants buffaloes rabbits everything because it's only the diversity which makes a forest really vibrant uh, if there are only tigers it is not a forest it is a zoo uh, so the diversity is what makes uh, indian multiversity alliance very vibrant because there are so many people coming from so many different regions with different perspectives and working to Uh, on the alternative space to bring meaning uh, to this world currently because no matter how much we are educated or advanced technologically uh, most of the people in the world are currently under huge superstition and belief that growth of economy is going to solve all the problem whereas that is not doing so much good it's in fact creating more social environmental and spiritual disbalance so this whole belief system which we are all gripped with is something that we need to change and i think various initiatives of indian multiversity alliance or various members are trying to address these and be small seeds of this change a seed now will hopefully be a forest someday and these are the seeds which are trying to reimagine how the world should be how uh, the work should be how life should be how uh, earning should be how forest should be how food should be everything so i think it's a great attempt and it's a diverse people and backgrounds and there are various organizations some are very small new whom we are nurturing and some are very pretty well established and making huge impact uh, not just in india but across the world uh, so that's what indian multiversity alliance is for all of us abhijit do you want to add something to that i personally really like the the play on the word university right um to me it is uh, such a nice way to distinguish uh, between two lines of thought that uh, university as an idea you know um, or makes us believe that there is one way to do things one way to learn one way to exist and one way to live um, and, and and the idea of the multiversity is the is quite the opposite of that that there is uh, many ways to learn many ways to live many ways to uh, you know thrive and there is no reason to compete with each other to get that best spot there is no best spot there is in fact um, a possibility to be inclusive and adopt many different ways of life simultaneously and and create choices for people so that they may choose which way they want to go for so to me i mean i fell in love with the idea of multiversity right at the name um, because uh, it it immediately uh, makes a point it immediately tells us that uh, we don't have to um believe in this nonsense that yeah th this is you know whatever we have seen as life and learning uh, schools are the only way to learn and and uh, you know a, a, a corporate life or, or uh, this uh, capitalism led life is the only way to live uh, there are other ways and and uh, certainly they cannot be dis discounted so to me that's a very powerful statement yeah <laughs> yeah since you talked about statements it also reminds me of for me like multiversities is the <clears throat> leveling up of the movement you know uh, the movement of uh, uh, the the reimagining movement or the so i i and nowadays i like to call it diversity movement you know uh, 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 of the, the the leveling up of the game you know in in terms of uh, uh, critique uh, it being a, a critique of the the factory schooling and factory schooling systems um i think it's it's also uh, uh, a lot of times i i 
I really enjoy talking about the numbers and you know the year. So you know, I take pride in saying that we we have more than uh, 80, 18, 85 projects uh, which are uh, associated with us from all around the country. Uh, it has been six, seven years now uh, since we started for the. Actually, Multiversities was a book written by Claude Elvarez uh, back in 1995 when I was a, when I was born, <laughs> exact the same year. Um, but I think that this uh, this form of multiversity which we are presenting today, uh, it has been seven years to, uh, that it has been uh, working al alongside the the global alliance of ecoversities. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and that that brings me to uh, so, so many years of work uh, that brings me to the question what have we uh, what have uh, we all have offered so far in the multiversities in the indian multiversities alliance so uh, again the leap and abhijit you guys can start and then so i think uh, there are there have been various initiatives that uh, we have worked with uh, some of which were driven by the, uh, you know, the central office of Indian Multiversity Alliance, primarily Harsh, Manish, and some steering company members. And there are some initiatives which are more collaborative in nature where different multiversities have come together and did those. So for example, the first kind of initiative is say, the Germany Day program, which few of us are driving uh, to nurture new seeds of multiversity and handholding them, mentoring them, and also providing seed funding in the initial stages so that they are able to take the initial shape. And once they are in some form, they'll be able to you know, expand and make a larger impact. Uh, so we run this Germinator program. On the collaborative part, there are many collaborative projects where various multiversities have come together to do those projects like Vimuk Shikshayatra, like uh, something that we are currently working on the survival camp i think archana and others have worked on few collaborative projects in the past so there are a lot of these collaborative projects uh, and i think the collaborative collaborative projects are wonderful because it helps us get together understand each other and make uh, you know more meaning to what we are doing as independent organizations we may be doing our work but when we collaborate with others we get to learn so many things we get to share so many things and do something which is beyond our limited uh, you know cocoon uh, so i really find this collaborative things wonderful and yes germinator i think it's long term process so we'll see how it evolves uh, yeah yeah i i i would only add that you know uh, a very nice and beautiful part of the um, alliance is the gatherings we do yeah so every couple of months we meet and uh, it has some meaning associated with it. It's not your usual conference where people just, you know, come and give speeches. Instead, it, it kind of feels like coming home. So the, I think the, the Alliance in some way uh, gives this sense that there is a home for you to go to, that you're not, even as an organization, you're not working alone. Uh, you're not, you know, doing your things alone. And there is, you know, uh, absolutely no community for you. It actually makes you believe in the opposite that, there is a home, there is a community, there are people you can belong to. And um, when your chips are down, when you are not feeling um, great, uh, then then there will be somebody to, to help you stand up. There will be somebody to encourage you. And, and you do that for somebody else when, when it's, it's the other way around. So uh, to me, that's a, it's a really beautiful society in some way um, that where each one is trying to do amazing, brilliant things, but you know, uh, at the end of the day, you come back home to your family and, and there everybody just is very happy to listen to you and, and um, support you in all the ways that they can. Yeah, that's, that's a nice way to put it, Avijit. I really love that. <laughs> uh, also, uh, I was, I mean, I did a bit of, uh, you know, preparation for this. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say some numbers. <laughs> Also, no, uh, actually, uh, uh, what Dilip was sharing about collaborative projects, I was just trying to prepare and figured out that uh, in last 
two years of COVID, we inter uh, we as Alliance interacted to more than eighteen thousand learners through our online uh, collaborative projects, uh, whether it was Vimukh Shiksha Yatra or the Alivelihood uh, Conference or the Gap Year uh, uh, Summit or the Youth Fest. So, and and one of the things that I feel that uh, that has been our key offering is is what abhijit was saying is the is the family is the tribe is the sense of uh, you know sense of uh, uh, this is my tribe uh, which is very uh, i feel which is very important for uh, the kind of work we are all involved with um, also uh, uh, also over the time we have uh, formally informally have been supporting many 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 more uh, uh, multiversities to germinate not only through the germinators program but otherwise also throughout um, we have been trying to support each other by uh, by doing uh, uh, you know sort of uh, exchange programs between each programs uh, people coming from uh, going from one program to other program to learn about the uh, different things that that are happening we have been doing physical yatras also uh, which which have been a beautiful uh, way to you know interact and encourage uh, people both to to uh, both for the learners to to join such programs and both uh, for the for the for the people who are already uh, thinking of starting something to really start and work on their own projects uh, so yeah those are, those have been some some of the offerings that that uh, that we have done and uh, a lot of good things have came out of uh, out of it uh, one of the you know a lot, most of it has been stories for us uh, you know we are all storytellers and we love to tell stories about what 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 things have happened so maybe uh, so maybe let's go with that and uh, Abhijit and Dilip Bhai, if you would like to share some of those stories which which you feel uh, has been an outcome of us coming together as an alliance. Maybe I can start with one. So, uh, you know, currently one of the initiatives that my foundation does, Jet Foundation, is uh, we have adopted this uh, Chinchwadi Adivasi village where we are trying to work on various issues of indigenous community like water, women empowerment, livelihoods, uh, education, variety of those things. Now, I landed up in this village only because of the connection of Indian Multiversity Alliance. So I was connected to Vanwadi by Harsh and Manish Bhai. Uh, earlier, I was working with Sonam Wangchuk in Ladakh. And when I started to focus uh, to do some work in my own local area in Maharashtra, uh, that's when Manish Bhai and uh, Harsh connected me to Vanwadi group. And I landed up in that forest working with them on various issues of water and uh, plantation and biodiversity. And as we went along, we understood that the whole question of fixing water or soil or biodiversity is not independent of the community with which we belong. And therefore we need to go to the community and started working in the community. Now this whole connection and this whole direction of whether it's forest versity or the education has been in some way uh, a learned attempt from different members of multiversity and through the connections that I got from them. Had it not been there, I would have probably, you know, because I come from corporate background, I would have applied some corporate filter to do something uh, you know, which is just economically more viable. Uh, but as I went on this alternative path, I think a lot many more paths have opened up in terms of what I can probably do now along with members, along with the different stakeholders. And so I think such opportunities arise and I'm really happy for that. Yeah, I think throughout this uh, journey of creating defy over these last few years, uh, there has been, you know, small things, small exchanges um, that have always helped out uh, in what we did. Uh, the most recent one uh, would be that we met very recently in Udaipur at a gathering and uh, uh, met one of the one of the persons who were attending um, at the gathering and we, we started discussing our work and now we are working together, creating a nook in in, um, uh, in near Dehradun uh, together with that uh, uh, organization and person. So I mean, these collaborations are not coming out of you know organized meetings, so to speak. 
uh, where you sit in a cafe over cups of coffee, but rather, you know, discussing under the stars and um, uh, under <laughs> the trees, talking about life and learning and where we want to go. So the, these kinds of collaborations are a lot more meaningful than when you Google somebody and write a cold email and, uh, or, or, you know, you, you just virtually talk to someone. So um, that's the most recent one um, that has come out of this um, being part of the, the multiversity. And, and some stories are still cooking. I mean, I would say, um, I don't know how much we are going to talk about that today, but uh, there are some new stories that we are cooking. The stories that that will, you know, that have only just started and and will complete in the future, um, and that's uh, even more exciting to me that you know somehow to be able to work on a grander, larger vision, uh, which which involves not just me or my organization, but um, you know a collective. Uh, 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 but you you start thinking in a very different way, and so that's uh, that's really beautiful for me at least that. You know, uh, the stories don't really end. You you start one, and before that one ends, there is another one that is starting, and uh, there's always more and more things to recount. So yeah, <laughs> I think for for um, for me, uh, it has been a very amazing journey you know, uh, with multiverse cities because one of our projects came out of some. Uh, 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 very intense collaborations through multiversities, which is the Surat Jail University project, uh, which uh, which eventually we we uh, we at Suraj got in touch with the jail. Then we uh, we met. Uh, we had a multiversities gathering, and we we met and we met uh, uh, Dickin from Manu, uh, Gandhi Ashram, and we met Abhishek from Navgurkul, and that's how we we sort of envisioned the J Suraj Jail University, and today we're working inside the jail uh, and it's a, that's the power of uh, you know collaboration and uh, you know coming together for us has been not only with that but for a lot of because we, uh, uh, you know Suraj uh, at Suraj we, we believe in self-design learning and a lot of our learners wants to explore different fields and uh, you know multiversities just opens up a wide range of different people creative people doing all sort of things and uh, a lot of kojis and learners from the uh, from our projects have been part of the, all these different projects and their people have come uh, come right, right now also in fact uh, one of the one of the projects uh, the dharavi dream projects one of the facilitators are here uh, is here and he he is working at the jail university teaching them music and rapping and also teaching poetry at, uh, in one of our fellowships at Sikshantar. So, so, you know, all those stories, these are all have been possible because of the multiversities. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, when we talk about stories, there are all, all not only good stories or ple pleasant stories that we have, we also have a lot of struggles and, uh, you know, tough times that we face. Uh, so maybe maybe we can we can share something about that also maybe uh, you know and maybe Abhijit can start because <laughs> struggles are always you know <laughs> Abhijit you have to start the struggles. <laughs> I I mean um, from my perspective uh, the struggle has been I mean what is the good is also the bad isn't it so uh, the good is that there is infinite possibility. And the bad is that there is infinite possibility. So uh, that, that makes it difficult uh, sometimes as a collective to have focus or to be able to do um, a few things as opposed to a lot of different things. So I think one of the most recent discussions that um, I have been a part of or, or uh, I've been really gunning for is um, trying, to, uh, trying to see if uh, we can have a very consolidated purpose that uh, can we be more than just a group of organizations and people um, and of course the, the the good feeling that comes with being you know a part of something but could we have also some common goals uh, some something to uh, achieve collectively and maybe could we dare to say that yeah in 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 this much time there will be uh, you know, we will affect the change that we have wanted to affect. So the that you know, it's 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 great to talk about usually that yeah, we are working towards changing education systems and living systems and so on. But then it gets very scary the moment you have to try and put a date to it. 
So uh, this is this is now the scary part that we are dealing with. That uh, are we ready for something like that? Are we ready to uh, take up a big challenge? To uh, say to go beyond, truly go beyond our personal goals and uh, and objectives and and create a common goal, create a sort of um, you know a, a point where we can proudly say yes. 20 years ago, we started here and we have arrived, you know, and then that was always the plan. It didn't happen accidentally. So uh, this is this is for me, uh, I, 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 I would say it's a positive struggle. I think we should struggle because if there is no struggle, then uh, we are probably just doing more of the same. Um, this struggle is a nice thing for us. It is uh, shaping us into something which, ha which has a focus, which is you know, dangerous even to some extent. And why shouldn't it be, right? To change something big, uh, you you have to be a little bit, um, you know, on the sharp edge. So I'm very happy about that, that we are going through this struggle and uh, who better, you know, what better people to go through with it, right? Uh, so that's, that's a very positive thing for me. Uh, and yet I would call it a struggle. by you want to add in? Yeah. Uh, so, so for me, obviously, there are struggles which are external, uh, be it organization, be it fundraising, be it being able to make the impact on the ground. But I would more focus on the internal struggles because we have been so heavily colonized with Western belief system that it's a struggle to really think that, okay, there can be an unconference. There can be something which is not structured, something which is not well-planned. For example, a simple example would be, I would normally in my course of 35 years of early life, I would normally, if you get sick, you go to a doctor. That's what you've learned. But after having been on this journey, uh, I understand what natural healing is. So I end up just fasting and it heals. <laughs> so it's uh, unlearning with what my belief system is and learning something which is totally new. And I think that's not just about food or medicine or it's about everything in life and how we see things, how we deal with things. Uh, earlier, you know, having more money or buying new jeans was a pride. Now I see it as a sin. So it has changed my perspective. So there are these challenges, I think, more and more, which uh, I have dealt with and I am continuously dealing with as I unlearn what I knew and learn something which is uh, more uh, logical or rational and unlearn something which is only part of a belief system. So I think it's my own evolution which is uh, helping and which is the challenge, the key thing. And once I think that is addressed, uh, the larger ecosystem uh, is definitely the next stage. Yes, yeah, being in the struggle, I think being is in the struggle is the most uh, powerful and insightful uh, thing. I think the, the, the amount of learning that happens in, while you are in the struggle, that cannot happen otherwise. And it's st sp speed in the process also. It pushes you to your core. Uh, at least for me, it, it works like that. Uh, I think from, from my perspective, one of the struggles that we have faced uh, over the years in multiversities is the learner's pool. Uh, you know, uh, because us being so diverse and so, uh, you know, radical at times, uh, it has it has always been a challenge in terms of, you know, uh, getting people, though nowadays it is not such a big challenge for us. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, also, uh, you know, as alliance to, to work, it uh, the commitment has been a challenge for us because all of us have our own projects and we have to, to do something together. We have to make extra time uh, and that has been a struggle, but it's a sweet struggle. <laughs> we, we have been able to navigate through it uh, so far. <laughs> and I think it's, it's also it also makes us realize how much we we sort of believe in the uh, in the movement and in the uh, how much we love each other also at the same time, not only the movement, but the love and the emotion that we have for each other. Uh, so yeah, those have been some struggles. I think uh, Abhijit has pop already wrote in the uh, in the ch uh, chats, but I think it's it'll be nice to hear from few of you. I think there are only two part, uh, three, four part, three participants. 
but that's okay i think uh, it'll be nice to hear or uh, if you guys have questions please please put in it's all, also heavy on us to just keep speaking guys <laughs> Yeah, maybe, I don't know how many, uh, if everybody can relate with this, but I'm starting mm -hmm. to see one of the struggles that we are, even as individual organizations or even as a collective, we're starting to see this. Uh, when you grow to a certain point, you see that even with you doing your part, the rest of the ecosystem doesn't exist. You know? So, for example, if you take schools as an ecosystem, right? There are schools, which are the learning aspect, um, but then there are teacher training institutes that train teachers. There are conferences for people to exchange their whatever knowledge and so on. And there is marketing agencies to help market school stuff. There's people who write curricula and together this whole thing, you know, then there is of course college admission related stuff and so on, so on, so on. And together it works as a system. So. Um, whereas when we start, for example, if you look at NOOCs from DeFi, um, we have created the learning spaces. That's just one part of the system. Right? Sessions are happening. And, yeah. Uh, so there is uh, each one of us usually works on one part of the system or one thing that we can do very well. And then uh, at some point, your learner or your participant at some point will, will move on and, and try to you know, find find things to do after that, or or take it forward. But it gets going to get very challenging for that individual because they have to again go back to an ecosystem that is designed for for school based education, for corporate uh, kind of work, for you know the certification uh, designed uh, systems. So they are going to to really struggle, and um, I, I feel that. Uh, that is the only way to resolve that is is by becoming a collective ourselves because uh, we we might see these gaps together and pool uh, pool in resources and be able to create these different pieces of the puzzle that don't currently exist that are not so easy like all of us when we try to hire facilitators or you know it takes so much time so much effort um, because where are the people coming from? They're still coming from school-based education. They're still coming from corporate uh, experiences in terms of work. So there's so much unlearning that has to happen because no matter what you are doing, the rest of the ecosystem is still that ecosystem which you know you're trying to get away from. So um, yeah, I think it, it poses a bigger challenge that um, can we really turn this into an ecosystem? Can we plug in a lot of these gaps where uh, you know, there's a possibility that people who want to, um, you know, enter and exit um, one of these learning environments or projects or experiences can then still continue doing that for the rest of their life um, in, in the most meaningful way that they want without somehow compromise and then go back to the same life that they were trying to escape in the first place, right? So this is um, quite, quite, um, an interesting thing. It took me a few years to also start realizing it, that, uh, you know, uh, it humbles you as well, that you will play a role, but then there is there is uh, a real requirement for people to come together and play a variety of roles, because you will not be able to do everything for sure. And uh, the, there's this becomes a very real possibility with, with an alliance like the Multiversity or even the Global Ecoversity Alliance. Um, because then you're talking about some very big shifts in terms of what ecosystems can exist. Harsh, I think is frozen. Harsh, are you frozen? Or mm, I am here. I think my camera got frozen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, I would not uh, do that. Uh, not with you around who, who spills all my secrets. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, so yeah, I think uh, I think Abhijit, it'll be nice if you you tell uh, tell people about our future plans. What 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 what's what are the big things that we're gonna do? Uh, you know. Yeah. Um, so we are 
certainly a very daring crew and uh, you know we talk about stuff at in the night and it scares us and then in the morning we actually try to do it so <laughs> that's where we are at the moment you know <laughs> uh yeah harsh is beautifully frozen isn't it you should take a photo um <laughs> so uh our, well in terms of the future what we i think we want to focus on a couple of things um it is very clear that uh, you know we we are able to give uh one thing very well which is being a home for for all of these you know people who want to uh, forget about even creating organizations but even want to start living in a different way so alliance i think will continue to be that to be that you know home that you can belong to to a family or a community that believes in you trusts in you and uh, supports you to to experiment in your way of life or way of learning as you would like um and then when talking about uh, support that's going to be i think a very big focus that uh, together as an um, as a group we really really want to support uh, people who want to start things you know who really want to even in small ways start um, experimenting with learning or start experimenting with farming or start experiment start trying out and creating um, new projects in their own communities or in their own areas uh, and even the ones that are a little bit ahead maybe they have been there for a year or two years or four years or five years so what even if they have been there for 10 or 12 years everybody has you know more learning and more growing to do and uh, we want to make it a little bit more organized and formal than the way it is informal right now right now we can support you with good words Uh, we can we can make you feel good and to some extent we can support you with resources but uh, but i think the future um, looks a little bit more sharpened the support will be uh, hopefully very very directed the resources that will be available would be much more focused um, much more aligned to allowing people to grow and supporting them through a longer journey than a couple of weeks or a couple of months so uh, this kind of um, uh, the the resource is one part of uh, what we want to get towards is actually being able to support our you know projects and people that are part of the multiversity uh, with the resources they need so that they don't have to slow down we we don't believe necessarily that we give everything that one needs i think the struggle is part of you know creating a project or creating a new ecoversity or you know the learning space and so on however um, we also understand that uh, when you're trying something radical or something different the you will not find that many opportunities that are available to others who are not trying something so radical who are trying things that are maybe more aligned with the world we live in so we want to support that we want to uh, encourage that we want to um uh, you know uh, enable at least to some extent the resources that uh, help that person to move to the next stage so resources is going to be one very important part of things and the second important uh, you know thing will be um, really the capacity building um as i said one of the big things that lacks is uh, very few places to learn from right as an organization we struggle to uh um, you know let's say dedicate money or resources to our own learning to our own growth uh, very hard because you're living maybe you know uh, if you're a for profit it's a project that you're paid for non profit maybe you're not even paid for that properly so <laughs> you're living basically based on the work you are doing but uh, growing that's a different thing um that that takes a different kind of support and different kind of backing so we want to support um members of the alliance with the with building the capacity of them their teams um so that they can actually move on to the next stage they can actually uh do things in a um in a manner that helps them be sustainable and and grow forward right we don't want to make things necessarily easier for anyone but we do want to create a level playing field so that the chance for a radical idea to grow is just the same as as for anybody else and this will be i think quite a focused attention that we will give in the next 10 years and we have i, I will i will not still uh, say it out loud here but we have put a goal for ourselves we have actually uh, in in a very strange mathematical form 
created uh, an imagination that there will be a point at which we will say that the you know we have radically changed the education system at least in this country so we are making plans like that very long term very uh, some of them maybe sound very distant but still quite uh, starting out quite close already you know starting out tomorrow day after the work has already begun and uh, with with more time and if you're not a member of the alliance i want to make this a you know a thing you'll find this out only if you become a member of the alliance so it's it's not really a secret but if it encourages you to join then uh, well i'm going to take that so uh, yeah join us and you will find out what what's cooking here where we are uh, trying to go and uh, what all is available for you um, as a member as uh, part of the multiversity uh, of course comfort good words and support but at the same time um, some real backing some real uh, force to to support you uh, in in going forward and it is purely by selfish for for selfish reasons too it's not it's not just because yeah we feel good about supporting people but it is quite important that is we have ultimately accepted that there's no way to reach that you know goal that we have where the the education system at least of you know this country maybe the subcontinent really really looks different really um, you know uh, not just a minuscule difference or an iterative difference but something of the sort of that when let's say 25 years down the line when somebody says the word education um, the first thing that comes to your mind is not you know benches and uh, blackboards and a teacher standing in front and exams and i hope you know that that is not what what we end up with so that kind of uh, complete reimagination takes a lot of effort and uh, we have committed ourselves to to make sure that we we contribute and, and provide uh, that kind of support um, to to the members. Is that good enough? I've said a lot without saying <laughs> a lot. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to add uh, recently uh, in one of the one of the ecoversities meeting me and Manish came up with this sign for abundance so that that that's the future for multiversities also what what Abhijit was talking about so so th this is this is what uh, we're gonna have in in future <laughs> great great um, I was just wondering how to go about this uh, I think a lot of people just joined while you were speaking Abhijit uh, so yeah I was thinking maybe we can we can uh, yeah we I think how much time we have on uh, uh, Archana left we have around 10 minutes more okay so uh, yeah questions uh yeah we, we can ask we can ask people to ask questions but they just joined so i don't know if they heard the whole thing so yeah. but let's let's open it up for questions i believe different people have joined for different reasons so you could at least share with us that you know what is the reason for you to uh, participate in today's discussion and Maybe if we have not talked about that, we can talk about it if we are able to. Yeah. So I'm sharing would be nice. If there's no questions, then I guess we still have a lot of work to do, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Long way to go. <laughs> All right, cool. Great. Was that you, Dan? No, I was going to say, it looks like Peter might have a question. Yeah, here. Peter might have it. Good. Um. Maybe not. I have, I have a question. I guess, how does the Multiversities Alliance interact with the Ecoversities Alliance? Is there like, do the regional, the regional groups, like, does the regional Indian group connect to the regional South American group? Or 
is it more like its own kind of alliance in and of itself or is there like interaction with the wider ecoversities is that does that happen often i'm kind of interested in like the local slash global interventions i'm wondering i guess how those two interact so one interaction dan is conferences and unconferences like these uh, you know a lot of a lot of people from our region will be meeting a lot of people from other regions uh, for sure but of course i mean it's not very uh, i mean it's uh, not very like happening every on a daily basis or a, or every week or something like that but we we have been interacting uh, as a, as a, as a group we have uh, we have been inter interacting with other regions uh, in different forms through uh, through the germination process through the uh, you know residency process um, uh, even la I think last year, few projects also happened collaboratively uh, with with in with other regions. Um, yeah, uh, and we will be a lot of us are traveling to Egypt uh, this year for the for the global gathering. Um, so that's also one one interaction. A few of a uh, few. Uh, few have been uh, go, a few have been granted uh, residencies to go and to different uh, different places in uh, in different regions. Uh, to, no, actually, not different regions. This time, it's only we are doing residencies in our own region <laughs> so far. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, but in in. Uh, in, in in past there have been such residencies where people have traveled to europe and uh, brazil and uh, you know uh, uh, latin america uh, to to do residencies with different but it's also because it's quite expensive for us to travel to latin america you know <laughs> so it has been limited but it it has been happening uh, in many ways uh, like abhijit has been doing a lot with the african region uh, in 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 different ways uh, yeah uh, archana has been very active with uh, a lot of uh, working group a lot of people in, in in from the indian region has been very active with the working groups of ecoversities uh, uh, you know different working groups so yeah, those those have been some. If any of any one of you want to add, Abhijit, the lead by. I think maybe there's two values to live by, which is you know, autonomy and collaboration simultaneously. So, it is great to have some autonomy that uh, that comes only with that regional experience, um, because it has to be contextual, isn't it? So it has to be something that the people who live and breathe that air uh, can understand and therefore can comprehend and respond but then at the same time uh, collaboration helps you to have newer perspectives to have um, maybe newer questions that may you you were not thinking about earlier so um, i think over time we would want to increase these interactions but i i guess the the limitation becomes the reason for interacting right so we have to find more reasons to interact we have to find more things to do together maybe yeah <laughs> yeah then what are some good potential reasons oh well uh there could be so many uh, i mean uh, some that i could i could say uh, would be to create some exchanges uh, between us um, we we discussed this for even within the india region but um, but even beyond, I think, again, the question becomes a little bit about resources, but uh, exchanges between, we, I think as founders, we get to travel a lot, but uh, the real meaning of exchange would actually come down from the learners. So if um, participants and learners could travel across and, you know, meet each other and, and there could be meaningful exchanges across continents, um, that would start making sense. And uh, that would really start some cross pollination, um, you know, between ideas. Because when a when a you know, I'll be very honest. Like when a founder goes, uh, they go with uh, you know what they they already know what they want to say, right? So they are they're, they're very prepared. But when a learner goes and exchanges, they they actually you know uh, live and and show what they what they are all about and what has been the impact of whatever that they have experienced so far. 
and that's a better way to learn from each other i feel like we did very recently we had from creativity at that some kids had come over um, to our side and and that was a beautiful learning experience just seeing how they do things and um, if you do it long enough then uh, you know it justifies the reason to travel all that much as well so that's just one um, you know one of the many many ways that we could do this or maybe then we can think about some initiative with where everybody from the globe participate all the members participate towards some some project or initiative that could probably become a finding force um, we have to again seriously rethink in terms of how do we do it uh, but yeah something like this can be thought of but i think uh, uh, there are future collaborations that going to happen in our region like so india is what india we have been so far because we are so many uh, we have been considering as one region but asia as a larger region it's a huge region and it's it's growing every day uh, since i'm also part of the ecoversities gat i have this uh, uh, you know uh, a, a, a bird's eye pr uh, perspective to it so the asia region is also pollinating and it's growing uh, and, and there, there are a lot of potential collaborations that we see and we have been also doing in terms of the uh, you know uh, the uh, global eco village network uh, in asia gaia and uh, with those those people we have been part of uh, different conferences there uh, the green conference and uh, their annual gatherings and all that uh, as collaborators so those those sort of collaborations are happening and there are multiple which are coming for in future as we are expanding in asia as the coversities is is expanding in asia because that's a, that's more contextual for us and that will be more feasible in terms of uh, logistical uh, you know uh, ways uh, of doing things doing projects together i mean it i mean it's good to learn from other regions but it's kind of impractical to travel to take the whole alliance to latin america or to europe or to africa it's good always nice to just like you know maybe few of us will be going and meeting everyone this time at e egypt and then when we come back that uh, you know sort of our learnings will help people here in um, when we share that in in the region that that sort of uh, brings some sort of uh, how do i say it like you know we share what we learned there and we share our contacts like next time when somebody wants to go to brazil i know 15 people who i can connect them to or abhijit will know so many people in africa uh, or or uh, dilip bhai will know so many people in all around the world so you know that kind of things will will is there and will be more so i think dolly is here tddp yeah she is there for the closing comment <laughs> so <let's laughs> for the closing <laughs> is she there i think she is there she just joined in spirit hi mona good to see you mona <laughs> yeah, oh yeah hi, mona hi. is also here yeah hi hi i'm out here bringing my cows home but i just thought that i would not others just keep missing this whole conference nice to see you all <laughs> thanks mona that's such a nice way of joining the conference while you are <laughs> you know with the cows <laughs> is there another cow uh, friends a, cow friends uh, cow friends yes <laughs> sorry 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 abhijit i was saying that uh, it's now 6 o'clock maybe there's another session planned to we have a session at 6:30 so if you guys want to do the closing maybe we can do it in the next 5 minutes in case if mona has anything to add otherwise we can find a closing to the ceremony <laughs> great how do we close i have a song that i can play to close <laughs> i was hoping the 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 dharavi team project crew will come and do some rapping for us <laughs> but let's see let's uh, hope for the best for the future <laughs> maybe in some other session dan you guys can have them they're let's doing the heart. closing ceremony they're there in the closing ceremony harsh how about you rap or you sing a song <laughs> oh dude you don't want to you don't want to run away from it 
no, 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 no. I, I, I can make, I can play songs for you and I can't sing. I, I, let me do what I'm good at. Oh, okay. Dolly is here. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you well. We yeah. can see you well. And now yeah. it's for, it's time for you to say something to close the session. <laughs> it was wonderful meeting you all. And I'm glad we are closing it now. <laughs> great, great. It's cool. I'll play a song and then we'll close. Thanks everyone for being here.